A lot of you know how much I loved my Garmin Striker 5 fish finder that I have on my boat. However, I think I have now officially outgrown that piece of uh, piece of technology and it's time for an upgrade. My upgrade, ladies and gentlemen, is this guy right here. This is the Garmin UHD 93 SV. So basically we upgraded from a five inch screen all the way up to a nine inch screen. So, oh my goodness, there's so many more features, so many more things in this fish finder so many extra tools that are going to help me be a better angler on the water and we're gonna go over a couple here in today's video now this does come with a new transducer I believe this is the GT 54 I will put the actual name right up here if I was correct then I won't put anything up there uh, I think this is the GT 54 it is much heavier than the transducer I previously had on here um, and I mounted things a little bit different than I did on the other boat so I'll go over that real quick for you guys here so the basis of all this right is this little box now this is just a regular Plano ammo crate box and this is what I use for all my wires and my battery the nice thing is is it's out of the weather it's out of most of the elements and, and temperature right there is some holes in there so it isn't you know it isn't sealed up or anything but this is where I'm keeping this dry and keeping everything kind of organized and stacked in here on hot days I can also kind of slide my phone on the top or whatever so it's just not sitting right out in the sun um, but this little box is what holds all the wires and battery and then I have two holes from the box now the first hole is right here and that hole goes to my transducer now this is a Scotty transducer arm and so basically it just sticks out and then I can actually fold this into the water which I will show you guys in a bit and it's boom you're you're reading you're on the graph so um, this is super easy and then we've also got two holes on this side one is for the power unit and one is for that transducer so that transducer cord here actually goes through the box coils up and it's all nice and, and neat in here and then pulls out in both those two go to the back of the fish finder right here and everything is plugged in sealed and and nothing is is you know out of the way there's no wires sticking around right it's it's very neat um, and with this boat you have to have something neat and organized because there ain't much space on here now one thing I did have to change for those of you that know my previous setup is these holes had to be drilled wider because these um, these little like inputs here are much bigger than the ones that come with the striker 5 and they have those little screw locks here which are very nice so I did have to widen that out a little bit on each side but that wasn't too big I mean this was probably an extra five or ten minutes and I was done mounting this on my boat this was so easy to put in it does actually pop out right here you can pop this and take the screen off that way you know what's nice is like if I'm going in to eat somewhere or just whatever right I don't want this on the bank I can pop that screen out and that's the expensive part is in the front so I can put that away and then if I want to reinstall it all I do is just pop pop it back on and I'm good to go so that is another huge feature that I love with this one now I am using the same um, mount here as you guys see uh, this basically screws into the boat and then this guy you know a lot of people use these on regular boats too however it is a little wobbly this one because this graph is way heavier than the other one I had so um, that is something that I'm gonna have to kind of watch and make sure if not, I will probably end up just maybe getting another one and maybe doubling them up um, or I'll just going to get a whole new one altogether and just have to try to patch those holes somehow. But um, as for right now, I'm not going to change that because it is working. If I see that it's kind of starting to wear on the plastic or, you know, something else with that wobble, then I will change it. But as of right now, it's been working great for me. Now, the transducer is a little different from the other one because the Scotty mount, you have to actually it goes up and it is kind of like a, I guess, a male and the other one was a female, so it actually slid in between the other two, and then you just put a screw through it and it was done. However, both these two, you have to actually just connect them straight like this. So all I did is take a screw, put them through both sides and then lock it on the other side and I put like a little rubber washer in between them just so that it kind of you know it's it's if it loosens up it's not going to just completely fall over that is one thing with this transducer is it can move as you guys see and just that little change right there 
could change a lot in terms of side scan, sonar, a whole bunch of different stuff. So that is one thing I'm going to have to watch is making sure that this thing is flat, straight, you know, down in the water. Um, but that shouldn't be too big of an issue, especially if I'm just, you know, paying attention to things. So that's the setup right there. Obviously, this is all in the front of the boat, which is nice. I can just sit and look at my graph from the front. I'll show you guys how I install that, um, you know, down. I, I move the little thing down into the water. Yeah, we have a beautiful, beautiful day on uh, one of my local lakes. So kokanee have been pretty good bite. So I think I'm going to get out and let's get a couple fish and I'll show you guys a little more about the graph. I'll see if I can do this one handed for you guys. There's a little button down here if you pop and it moves this out. Now, if you notice, it is sitting, right? It is facing the same way that it should go in the water. And then there is a little screw right here. And when you undo that, this pops down. You just gotta put it straight down. Make sure you get that straight. Right here. You lock that up. And as you guys notice, we are graphing. So this is the main feature, obviously, that most people are gonna use on a, on a fish finder, right? The uh, just regular, you know, regular sonar. This is gonna be the best one for reading kokanee, whatever. Obviously, as you guys see right there, those are most likely gonna be trout, 35 feet. Those could be bass too. Um, could, could be pike minnows, bull trout. Could be a couple things, but my guesses are either bass or rainbows. As you can see, there's, there's one fish, two fish, three. There could be a fourth in there, but I'm thinking three. Um, pretty cool. Obviously, we're already reading fish. This one is an awesome feature. As you see, we're marking more fish out here. Um, I know this little flat here is loaded with rainbows, so that, that's probably what it is. If we go back here, we can also go to our clear or side view side view is really really cool um it's you know probably going to be about a minute before you're going to get you know your whole screen loaded up but obviously you know if there is fish right in here you can see it right as you click it but this is not something that you're just going to quickly you know switch over to just to see what's by you you know this is something where if you're trying to mark fish and you need to just kind of cruise really slow this is what you're going to have to do so now as you guys see it's been about i don't know 35 40 seconds and most of it is on the screen now now this lake is pretty Pretty, uh, pretty contourless. Uh, it's pretty much just a big, deep, like, trough, because it's basically a part of a river that is now dammed, so super deep. There's not a lot to see here, but if you were fishing, like, a weedy lake or, you know, some, or you're fishing, like, a shallow area for bass or whatever, and you want to see stumps and logs, and, you know, that's going to be a lot better of a use than what I'm doing today. You know, I'm trolling. I'm going to be trolling in probably one to 200 feet of water, so this isn't really going to help, but this will help. Uh, on other lakes in Idaho that I cannot wait to to fish here this year. So that's yeah, that's another one I'm going to use right there. The clear view can be pretty cool too. Um, I've noticed that it doesn't read, it doesn't seem to pick up fish as well as just a regular sonar. Even if the you know I increase or decrease the sensitivity and color gain and stuff, it just doesn't seem to pick up fish as well. If you guys know why, let me know in the comments below. Um, but this is going to be great for structure and identifying like exact things down there. So you know. If there's a big mark on the screen and I'm trying to figure out what it is you know I can go to this and realize hey oh yeah that's a, a sunken tree down there or you know whatever whatever's down there you're gonna really be able to read it with that the big thing for me is going to be the combo right so going to the combos and doing this and this is gonna be the last thing I'm gonna show you guys because this is what I am going to be doing today as you guys see it does show uh, what you previously have done on the lake and I'm gonna be able to mark and and, and see where I caught fish from last week um, but this is the screen that I'm going to have up most of the day. This is just so freaking crucial. I mean, this is just a game changer for me. Now I don't have to have my hands, you know, on my phone all the time and I'm ready to just pick up a rod and go. So as you guys see, your speed is up here. So that is really nice. Obviously we need that for trolling. Um, the voltage doesn't matter. I got a lithium battery. So that's always going to say, you know, it's got it's at its highest. As you see, we're getting a big drop off here into the deep water. Um, and then obviously uh, temperature, temperature's huge. That is only surface temp, but still pretty cool. So yeah, that's just kind of a quick little rundown of the fish finder and kind of what I'm going to use it for. Um, obviously, I'm still kind of, I'm not a pro at the, at the UHDs yet, so I've got some work to do on them, but I'm pretty pumped. I'm so excited. So yeah, let's go get some fish. Or a king, I'll be happy with a king. Or a bull, I'll be happy with a bull. Either one kokanee. Oh my gosh, no way. 
No way. I'm literally just saying one fish is all I want today. One fish is all I want and that happens. You have got to be, you can't, you can't script that. <laughs> That's nice, whatever it is. It's a really nice fish, a lot of weight. What a nice, nice kokanee right there. Oh, we need you, we need you. Yes! That's what I'm talking about, folks. That's what I'm talking about. So another really cool feature with the Garmin here, and you can do this on the other one as well, but there is a pin button, which I will actually just show you guys with the camera here. Okay, so we just caught a fish right in here, correct? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click mark. And all it did is that right there, you can go to back or eventually it'll just kind of like go away on its own. And now if you notice, when you zoom in, it kind of takes away from the picture. But if you notice, we now have a mark right there on the screen. So basically this is our track and where we went and that's where we caught the fish. So it's really nice, it's super easy on this. And then basically it takes you back out. If you want to go in either, for instance, if I want to zoom this, you click on it and then you can go in or out, for instance, like that back. And then if we want to go into the map, you just tap it and you just scroll over as much as we're scrolled in. So then you can just scroll out just like that. So super easy. Oh, folks. Oh, folks, that feels so good. It has been a very rough, rough morning. I wanted at least one fish catch today, you know, one fish in the net for the video. So I'm glad I, I got that. You guys can see that here, but look at how clear those marks show up. I mean, that is like, that is such a clear image of fish right there. I mean, that is so cool to see. And you know, with your higher quality fish finders, you're really gonna get a, a good look at them like that. How cool. I know in this video, it kind of seems like I talked bad about the Garmin Striker 5. However, I absolutely love that fish finder. I still use it all the time. Um, and I actually did a video breaking down that fish finder as well, which you guys will see right up here. Hope you guys got a kick out of today's episode here. Hope you learned something. We'll see you guys next time on Humbug Videos.